This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, December the 23rd. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. And there's a look at the clouds streaming across the area from our Trustville Sky Cam. And we've uh, had some higher clouds move in that helped keep temperatures up just a little bit. A similar view from the Alpha Sky Cam network at Mount Cheeha. Complex pattern, but we're seeing moisture increase, especially to our west, that will allow uh, showers and thunderstorms uh, to occur uh, later tonight and into uh, Monday. In the upper atmosphere, we're dealing with uh, the ridge flattening out as a number of short waves will be coming by, the biggest one coming by on the 25th. Temperatures across the area uh, still a bit coolish, um, a little bit cooler in the east, central, and northeast sections of the state where they dropped into the 20s more than we did in the central and west central Alabama where the clouds came in around midnight and helped to blanket the area somewhat. We are seeing on radar a, a little bit of echoes showing up on the Alabama-Mississippi line in the vicinity of Meridian, but as you see from the sounding, it is very dry aloft, so much of that precip showing up on radar is not going to be reaching the surface until we can moisten up the sounding, and it probably will be from the top down. QPF-wise, we're looking at on the order of 1.5 to 2.5 inches of rain across much of central and north Alabama for the next five days. Storm Prediction Center is not uh, pro uh, projecting any organized severe thunderstorms for today, although you can see the thunderstorm area, but none, uh, no organized severe weather. Day two, that's Christmas Eve, we see a slight risk primarily over southeast Texas. And then day three, slight risk goes all the way from southeast Texas across uh, uh, most of Louisiana, the lower half of Mississippi, and the lower three-fourths of Alabama, as well as the Florida Panhandle, and a little chunk of west central Georgia. We'll be talking about the conditions for that in a moment. Here's the 06E GFS model run. And we see the ridge breaking down. And of course, as it does, moisture at the surface begins to increase off to our west. So uh, I think we'll stay dry pretty much through uh, the early afternoon at least. On uh, Christmas Eve, we see the short waves uh, moving by. And uh, that, uh, because of that, the frontal system will actually kind of sag into the area. Now, it's a question of exactly where it will stall out, but it looks like it'll stall out primarily across the southern half of the state of Alabama. Then on Christmas Day, here comes the big storm system, and we see that digging into the Red River Valley across Texas. And with that underneath, we see a surface low in the vicinity of Lake Charles, and uh, models in pretty good agreement, as you can see from the European, um, a little bit further to the north. And of course, the storm track, the exact storm track, is going to determine a number of factors, who gets severe weather, who doesn't, who gets snow, who doesn't, that sort of thing. Let's take some intermediate times, and here is uh, 6 p.m. on the 25th, and you can see that the surface low by the GFS uh, projections is in the vicinity of Tupelo with a warm front up to Chattanooga, and that puts us in the warm sector. By uh, midnight, on Christmas night, we see that the surface low is in the vicinity of Nashville. And then by uh, 18Z on the 26th, midday on the 26th, the surface low is up over southern Ohio. Well, let's see what's uh, likely to happen here. And there is the projections off of the GFS uh, at midnight on Christmas night. And you can see that the GFS is suggesting the Worst, uh, the, the greatest Cape values will be along the Gulf Coast, but it does bring values uh, that are um, sufficient for severe weather uh, on the order of about uh, 500. Uh, I see a, a 385 value in there, so and some 500 values just to the south of that. So uh, indeed, we do have the, the instability we need for some severe weather. The European suggesting that the surface low would be in the vicinity of uh, Tupelo, and then it's uh, a little different on the um, by uh, 18Z on Wednesday. So um, definitely a little bit of differences, but certainly not enough to be all that uh, significant. Now, what are our chances of severe weather? Well, looking at, the, once again, the GFS, and if we look at the two-meter dew points, we see that the GFS is suggesting that we will see two-meter dew points surge northward all the way up into, looks like about the Coleman area, with values 
in the 60s. So that would be the lower 60s. So that certainly puts us in, you know, a lot of a lot of moisture in the low levels, which is what we want. We've already seen we're going to have some instability, not a high values. We also have bulk shear values that are over uh, 40, and that's uh, values that are certainly enough for rotation to occur in the thunderstorms. And then, of course, we're concerned about snow after the event. And if we look at the 850 temperatures, uh, and this is at 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning, the day after Christmas, and you can see that it certainly looks like the lower elevations of the atmosphere will be pretty chilly. Uh, the break between green and blue is the zero degree isotherm at 850. And then finally, uh, just looking at the um, precipitable water values, they're not high. So uh, once again, this is at uh, 12Z or uh, 6 a.m. on the 26th. And the precipitable water values, they're certainly there. Not a great deal of moisture, but it looks like the cold air may arrive before the moisture is completely gone. And so uh, not a major snow event, but certainly an event where we might see some uh, snow flurries or rain mixed with snow. Uh, looking at the 24-hour uh, projection for snow that ends at 12Z on Wednesday, you can see the GFS is picking up some uh, very light snow across the Tennessee River Valley, but the bulk of the snow extending from Arkansas up into um, Indiana and uh, northern Ohio. And right now, no watches or warnings for uh, winter weather or severe weather across uh, the eastern half of the country. So let's move on. <laughs> the big trough moves on out quickly. This is uh, the 20, Thursday, the 27th. And as it does, it takes that storm system up into New England. Uh, so presenting some issues for those folks up there. Then uh, we see on Friday, we get a little... Um, kind of break in the action. And of course, Thursday is a break in the action. We, we see the clouds increasing again on Friday as moisture comes in on a southwesterly flow and we see moisture returning just to our west. So I think perhaps for much of the day Friday, we should stay uh, dry. And then uh, we see another trough on the 29th or Saturday. And that one, of course, uh, allowing a good southwesterly flow. And so once again, we see moisture increasing and that brings uh, potential for some showers in our area. And then on Sunday, a week from today, the trough moves by. So once again, we should dry out and cool off. It looks like temperatures staying uh, in the vicinity of climatological averages around, uh, you know, 50 uh, four or so for highs and 32 or so for lows. Now, very quickly, out into voodoo country, here is the first, and we see a mild January 1st for us with moisture as the southwesterly flow is picking up moisture out of the Pacific. And then, woohoo, the 7th, it looks like we have a much colder look. So the pattern's staying very active with another vigorous short wave coming in. Uh, to the central plains out of the Rockies. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for today. Uh, stay tuned to the blog for later posts as we watch the development of the two weather systems that we're watching, kind of a tale of two systems. I should have the next uh, video posted first thing on Christmas Eve. So I hope that you have a wonderful day today and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham. <laughs>